Ladies and gentlemen, we are back once again to talk about Peacemaker on HBO Max, this absolute masterpiece of a series. We continue now over halfway through the season with episode 5 on HBO Max, which I'll be honest, was a little lackluster. Well, actually, I, this is probably not the right word to use, but it was just, I don't know, I feel like it was a good episode, but it feels like there wasn't anything big going on here that really progressed the story forward hugely, especially given last week's huge uh, ending. And it did also kind of feel like a shorter episode, but then again, it, it looks like I'm pretty sure it was like the same length as all the other episodes. So I don't know what it was about this episode. It was definitely um, weaker than the other episodes, but again, I still enjoyed it. It still has that James Gunn magic. It was a great episode, and of course, I'm ready to talk about it. So guys, spoiler warning, if you've not seen this episode, Peacemaker Episode 5 on HBO Max, definitely go check it out. But without further ado, let's jump into this and break down the brand new episode of Peacemaker. So we start the episode with a crazy team meeting where everybody is just not getting along. They have a terrible team dynamic, but in this episode, they are going on another mission to kill some more butterflies, very similar to what we did in episode three, except it's a completely different mission this time. Now, before we get into talking about that, let's talk about everything that is going on with Augie Smith, aka Peacemaker's dad, because of course, we know that he is in prison, he is the white dragon, and so he fully rats out his son to the detectives, and of course, they don't believe him, but they do actually retest the fingerprints and find out that it was actually Christopher Smith that was there that technically murdered that woman from the first episode that he was, uh, you know, do doing stuff with. But just as Detective Song thinks like, oh, we cracked the case, this is it, Augie Smith is safe to go and he's free and everything, and it's actually Christopher Smith, aka Peacemaker, that's when the new captain comes in, Captain Locke, who, as we saw earlier, is actually working with Mern. He is now the new police chief, he has taken over, and he actually switched the test results to make it look like that Augie Smith actually was the one that committed that murder. And then the episode ends, at least for that storyline, with detective song and i don't remember the guy's name but you know the, her, her partner uh going and meeting up with judge judy which is not the judge judy you're thinking of this one's a dude but still it was funny and it was cool and definitely an interesting storyline that's being set up here i have a feeling that by the end of this uh augie definitely is going to be proven innocent he's gonna get out somehow and he's gonna want revenge so he's probably gonna suit up as the white dragon take on his son i think it's gonna be really cool and i'm excited to see where that goes but as for our main squad in this episode, like I said, we are going on another butterfly mission here, where now Peacemaker is utilizing another helmet with some different superpowers. This time it has x-ray vision, so uh, he activates x-ray vision with his helmet, and he can actually see butterflies in people. So he looks around, and he can see the butterflies in people's brains, so it makes it a lot easier to just see, like, oh, there's a butterfly, shoot him, and all that stuff, and we see some great examples of that in this episode. And... What's weird, though, is that one of the butterflies tells Peacemaker uh, about their guardian angel, Charlie. So who is Charlie? Well, we actually find out who Charlie is very shortly after this, because after all the butterflies here are defeated, we get some great action sequences here, then all of a sudden... A now, Charlie the Gorilla in the comics is a very, very minor, very obscure character from DC Comics because he only appeared in one comic issue all the way back in 1966 in a series called Star Spangled War Stories. And basically that's what he is. He is a intelligent gorilla that cannot talk. I, I don't remember for sure if he talked in this episode. I didn't really notice if he did. Uh, but in the comics, he could not talk, uh, but he did have like increased intelligence and like this crazy uh, military background and knowledge and all that stuff. It's pretty crazy, but again, it's like such an obscure character, but that's like, kind of where James Gunn shines. That's why he did Guardians of the Galaxy and the Suicide Squad, because he excels with these obscure characters, and that's something I kind of like that James Gunn does, because it's so smart of him doing it, because instead of taking big characters like, oh, like the Joker and Harley Quinn in the Suicide Squad, have them in there and have them in that beginning part where, as a part of the team that, that dies within the first five minutes, everybody would be so mad and so annoyed about that, but if he uses characters like Javelin and 
Blackguard. Nobody cares if those characters get killed off real quick. So I think that's something that James Gunn always really utilizes is just the obscurity of these characters that nobody really cares about these characters until he makes us care about them. And and Charlie the Gorilla, it's a cool comic reference, but doubt anybody knew who that character was before this. I know I didn't, but it is just a really cool comic reference that we have now. Charlie the Gorilla, even though he ends up getting killed here, which, speaking of that, yeah, um, Charlie the Gorilla, he starts attacking the team, and then John Economos, aka the Econom Goat, uh, he shows up with the chainsaw and just brutally murders Charlie, which was very disgusting, um, to say the least, but also really cool at the same time. And I love how after this that Peacemaker and Economos actually kind of start bonding because you've seen throughout all these episodes that they've kind of hated each other. You know, Peacemaker's always calling him Die Beard and all this stuff. And they just have a terrible relationship. But now, now they're kind of starting to bond over things like, for example, their uh, sim- similar tastes in music. So that was pretty cool. And after the mission success, we have just some great team bonding here. Like, you see them all the way home, listening to that music, just bonding together. You see Harcourt start a group chat, and, like, they're all putting in their emojis. So that was great. You see a little bit more development between that little uh, uh, romantic flame between Harcourt and Peacemaker. I love all that. But... Of course, then we got to get back into the serious stuff here because at the end of the episode, after the mission success, Adebayo goes back to Peacemaker's place and they are working on some work. I think she said she, they wanted to go through some computer stuff or something like that. And it basically turns into like a beer drinking ther- therapy session where they talk about Peacemaker and Harcourt and like how that could be a thing or maybe it won't. But while Peacemaker is in the bathroom, Adebayo plants the diary that... Amanda Waller wanted her to so she puts that in there and I have a feeling that probably before Detective Song is able to get a warrant and search the place and find that and you know arrest him like Amanda Waller wants him to or her to then I feel like Adebayo is kind of going to feel bad she's going to come clean maybe that's going to really hurt Chris but he'll eventually come to forgive her because she's the one that he trusts the most um, so this is definitely interesting, and again, I feel like she's definitely going to regret this, and she'll be coming out very soon and coming clean, uh, with this news that, like, hey, Amanda Waller is my mom. But before we move on, though, probably the most important part of the scene is we did see a really nice Easter egg here. On the wall, we have a newspaper that says, New Superhero Takes Down Kite Man. So, of course, referring to the fact that maybe Peacemaker took down kite man so kite man hell yeah that's right guys we just got kite man in canon in the dcu i mean we got it back in episode two i think it was with batmite and then we got kite man so kite man does exist in the dcu and i'm really hoping we see him at some point soon maybe in the next suicide squad movie i don't know but kite man that is just awesome But of course, it's after this where we get our big cliffhanger ending for the episode where Adebayo goes back to our HQ. Nobody's there except for Clemson Mern. And she just like she says she can't sleep. So then she sees Peacemaker's helmet laying on the table there. So she picks it up, tries it on, is just messing around, trying to have some fun and stuff. And then she activates the X-ray vision, turns around, looks at Mern, sees that he is a butterfly. He realizes he knows she knows that he is a butterfly so he attacks him and that is where the episode ends and wow so what is gonna happen here is Mern gonna kill Adebayo I really hope not I don't think he will because if that was gonna happen that probably would have been the cliffhanger um so I have a feeling somebody's gonna save her or maybe maybe actually like Judo Master we know that he's still hanging out there maybe he's gonna pop back out and save Adebayo I think that that'd be pretty cool bringing back more to the good side so yeah I'm really interested to see where things go from here it was definitely a shorter episode uh but I still enjoyed it I'm still excited to see where things go uh three episodes left I can't believe we're already halfway through the season uh but I'm so so excited for this series literally every week I always look forward to the brand new episode of Peacemaker and every week I'm like oh man it the just can't come soon enough so i'm so excited for that next week with peacemaker episode six but for now guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below on peacemaker episode five 
on HBO Max. Let me know all your thoughts, theories, and predictions in the comments below. And thanks so much for watching. Please drop a give and join this video and hit the subscribe button so I keep it to date on everything goes on in the DC life.